Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IAS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 31st March 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see the today's quote. So today's quote is, Arise, awake and stop not till the goal reached. So you have to arise, you need to awake and should not stop till your goal is reached. And this is one of the motivation quote. Okay, and I hope this will create some positive vibes in your preparation today. So now let us try to see first topic. It is regarding this Vasudaiva Kutumbakam. So this this article which is mainly talking about food. Okay, food actually. If you are talking about India's India's uh, India's move regarding this food. So actually earlier we we are very much food shortage country. But we took number of measures and now we are a food surplus country. And now because of this food surplus, now we are mainly providing some humanitarian assistance for the other countries in crisis now. For example, Afghanistan. So that is the thing which mainly said in this article. So this topic it is important regarding your GS paper too. And you can use this Vasudevaka Kutumbakam in your ethics and even in your mains answers as well. And this topic it is exclusively important from your mains. So now let us try to understand this topic in a very great detail. So actually you know that. So because of the geopolitical issues, for example, Taliban's, they came into power in Afghanistan. And Afghanistan, it is in severe economic crisis. And if you are talking about Sri Lanka, so Sri Lanka it is also in severe economic crisis now and because of ongoing Russia Ukraine crisis that led to increasing of hunger. So globally hunger which is mainly increasing and even on another side we can see there is some climate crisis there is increasing of global temperature this global warming is happening and we are using excessive amount of vehicles and that led to excessive amount of greenhouse gases which are released in which are released into this atmosphere and even there is melting of glaciers and increasing of uh, sea level rise and unexpected rainfalls that is mainly seen and in some areas it is drought so because of this climate crisis also that is mainly affecting the food productivity or agriculture productivity here and even because of this COVID-19 pandemic that we experienced that led to some shocks, conflicts, poverty, inequality, etc. So these are the some important issues now we are facing in our country, not only in our country but across the world. And because of all these events that led to millions of living people who are mainly facing hunger and many of them did, did not have proper access to adequate food and the more people they are living in hunger um, the number which is mainly increased if you are comparing with 2015 so in that area in that time that is in 2015 because of this increasing amount of hunger so we mainly came up with this sustainable development goal that is no hunger but in 2019 the number which mainly increased to 650 million people around the world they are mainly suffered from this chronic hunger and actually in 2014 the number was 43 million and 2019 it increased to 650 million and in this 2019 due to onset of this global pandemic the number of people increased okay increased regarding this starvation and this mainly doubled from 135 billion people to 270 million people who are mainly having this starvation right so this is the data and if you're talking about India's outreach, so we are mainly talking about this concept of this Vasudaivaka Kutumbakam, right? So this Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, it is nothing but earth is one family. It means earth is one family. From India's traditional philosophical outlook, mainly that gained huge relevance, okay? Huge relevance over past 75 years. And it is being cited in this United Nations General Assembly to underline the collective nature of the crisis and the matching response is needed. So especially to fight against this hunger. So it is not the problem of a single country, right? So all countries, they need to come together and they need to take effective actions. So they need to collectively fight against this crisis here. So this is the thing which mainly said here. And if you're talking about the core concept of this Vasudha, Vasudha means nothing but the planet Earth. 
so this vasudha which mainly describes the different nations from one collective and cannot escape the common connection of concern and as well as humanity okay so vasudha means nothing but planet earth so it is mainly describing that how different nations from one collective and cannot escape the common connection so one country it is connected with another country okay so if any concern which is happening in one country means that is also the concern of another country here so if you are talking about the concern here we are talking about hunger and food insecurity so the number of people in need of urgent food assistance it is estimated like 270 million in 2021 and these people under the blink of the starvation so because of this covid 19 pandemic so this crisis had been grown significantly and because of this crisis in afghanistan and even ongoing war in this ukraine also that led to the increase in incidence of people who are blink of starvation and not only this hunger we are also having another problem that is malnutrition so malnutrition is also one more problem here so this malnutrition which also remains enormous and about 150 million children they were stunted and nearly 15 million children they were wasted okay and every other child as well as 2 billion adults are suffering from this micronutrient deficiency so this is the data regarding what are the issues that we are facing and if you are talking about india india it now it became a food surplus country so it mainly started providing some humanitarian assistance for the other countries example here is so india's recent india's recent commitment for providing some food grains in the form of humanitarian assistance for this afghanistan okay so this is mainly done through this united nations food program okay under this united nation food program india which is mainly providing some humanitarian assistance for this afghanistan so india committed to provide about 50000 metric tons 50000 metric tons of food assistance in the form of wheat for this afghanistan so out of this the first consignment already reached this afghanistan right so if you are talking about data regarding afghanistan 22.8 million people 22.8 million people it mainly contributes half of the population of afghanistan they are projected that they are food insecure in 2022 and also about 8.7 million they are at the risk of famine related conditions okay so about 8.7 million they are at risk of famine like conditions and out of this 22.8 million people okay they are mainly food insecure and nearly 4.7 million children pregnant and as well as lactating women they are having a risk of malnutrition so whenever the parents that is pregnant women and as well as lactating women they are malnourished means what happen that will be also transferred to their children okay that will leads to increase in the risk right and about all 34 provinces they are facing crisis of emergency levels of acute food insecurity in afghanistan so this is about data regarding afghanistan and this world food program in afghanistan which mainly plays a massive supply chain and it is mainly focusing on this logistic infrastructure with hundreds of trucks and as well as staff they are mainly ensuring food assurance or food assistance for these people okay and they are mainly making some contributions and partnership with the government of india and they want to provide or they want to save the lives of children women and as well as men who are in need in afghanistan so not only india but even if you are talking about other countries from past two years onwards other countries they are also providing some assistance uh, assistance to this afghanistan from african countries and as well as middle east and as well as west asia to overcome this natural calamities and as well as covid 19 pandemic so we're talking about from sufficiency to assistance so what is the journey of india so earlier we didn't had food grains actually we do not have much food security in the country and we also dependent on the other countries for the import of this food grains but we came up with this a green revolution in 1960s after once we started this green revolution then then our india which made as a self sufficient country and we started producing some surplus food grains in the country right so in 2020 india produced over 300 million tons of cereals and also we had a food stock of about 100 million tons 
and because of some policies of government and because of some incentives that which is mainly provided by the government to the farmers so that led to this surplus in india so in 2021 india exported about 20 million tons of rice and as well as wheat here so actually we had a long journey and we moved from this chronic shortage of this food grains to surplus food grains okay so because of this what are the lessons that we can provide in this india so that can be taken up by other developing countries in the asia africa and as well as latin america and we can come up with some policy interventions like land reforms public investments institutional infrastructure and we can also come up with some new regulatory system public support and interventions in the agri markets and as well as agriculture research that will be helpful to make any country to be a self-sufficient and, and food surplus country so if we're talking about safety nets in india yes in india also there are number of people they are poor and there is also hunger that is seen mainly to address that poverty and hunger in india so india government of india had some programs for example per se i can talk about national food security act of 2013 so one of the india's greatest contribution here is national food security act of 2013 which mainly targets okay which mainly focusing on targeted public distribution system and it is mainly focused on midday meal program and mainly focused on integrated child development services as well so these are the some important schemes which are mainly present in india which is mainly focusing to provide food security for the poor and as well as hunger and today india's food safety nets which are mainly co collectively reach over about billion people and government which is also having this public distribution system and it is also having buffer stock policy and even recently due to this covid 19 pandemic that led to increasing of poverty and hunger mainly to address this issue government mainly came up with this pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana so under this pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana which mainly provides relief to 800 million beneficiaries and they are mainly covered under national food security act from this covid 19 induced economic hardships and they are also extended by another six months up to september 2022 so in this way we are having number of schemes especially to provide food security for the people so this is just of this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding prisoners identification bill so already we discussed this topic in our earlier lecture so actually this topic which is discussing about this criminal procedure criminal procedure identification bill identification bill 2022 so this article which is mainly talking about the criminal procedure identification bill 2022 so now let us have a detailed discussion of this topic let us try to understand what is the concern of the author so this article it is important from your mains point of view especially from your gs paper to under quality so now let us try to see context so actually you know that our union government came up with the latest proposal and this proposal which mainly enables the collection of biometric and some biological data from prisoners and it mainly includes some physical measurements photographs fingerprints so it is mainly raising some serious questions about legal validity okay so our union government which is mainly enabling a bill so this bill which is mainly focusing on biometric data and as well as biological data that can be collected from the prisoners and this data will be stored for 75 years so if you see the practice of recording of these photographs and as well as fingerprints of prisoners so this is a century old old formula that we can see in our country actually this is is mainly backed up by law which mainly dates back to 1920 so since 1920 onwards we are mainly recording photographs and as well as fingerprints of these prisoners so it is a century old tradition in the country under the law which is mainly date back to 1920 but now union government which mainly proposes the expand to expand the idea of uh, taking measurements and this will cover the fingerprints palm prints impressions foot impressions physical and biological samples and their analysis and they can also collect even behavior attributes like signatures handwriting etc 
but here because of this bill some people some members are mainly arguing that so this bill mainly wins against the supreme court judgment in this case putaswami okay that is that judgment said that right to privacy it is a fundamental right so whenever we are storing data here it is mainly against this right to privacy which is a fundamental right and some people mainly say that whenever we are going for drawing of samples and possibly that will also leads to violation of article 20 sub class 3 which mainly talks about right against self incrimination right and there are some important concerns that whenever you are going for preserving of data sharing of data dissemination of data and destroying of data so that will also leads to some privacy issues and this bill which mainly said that this data will be stored for 75 long years so this is also one cause of concern so there is a concern regarding privacy and as well as safety of the data okay and if you are talking about collection storage and destruction of vital details of uh, any personal in nature okay so actually in india we do not have data protection law and there is no punishment regarding breaching of this law so how can we go for collection storage and destruction of the data without having a proper data protection law in the country so this is also one cause of concern so this bill which is a very much controversial and because of this it is having a tendency to arrest activists protesters and even innocent people and to invoke charges is on the rise so because of this author says that so this bill need to be sent or referred to the standing committee for deeper scrutiny before making it into a law so this is just of this topic and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding assam meghalaya boundary dispute resolution so this topic it is important regarding gs paper 2 paper 3 under internal security and this topic you can get a prelims questions and as well as mains question so in prelims you can get a question like so which are the following states or sharing boundary with assam or which are the following states or sharing boundary with meghalaya so in this way you can get a map based question from this topic and you have to see the geography physical features of this assam and as well as meghalaya like where are the different hills are present like uh, garo hills kasi hills jaindia hills and which are the rivers which are mainly flowing between these two assam and meghalaya so in this way also you can get the questions even the questions can be from your national parks so which of the following national park are present in this meghalaya and assam you can talk about lokthak lake in meghalaya okay so this will be the some important so let me know whether this lokthak lake which is located in meghalaya or manipur okay so this is one important question okay and you have to see the physical features and even you have to see the political map of this assam and as well as meghalaya and you have to see some disputed areas between this assam and meghalaya in the map so these will be some dimensions that you need to think about so if you are talking about context it mainly says that so context mainly says that assam and meghalaya which mainly partially resolved a 50 year old dispute along with their 884.9 kilometers of boundary so between this assam and meghalaya boundary so there is some dispute so here assam and meghalaya they mainly came up with resolution of this boundary issue and actually this issue which mainly facilitated by our union home minister he mainly urged the states to resolve their boundary dispute by august 15th 2022 because this year august 15th which mainly marks 75 years of independence so we're talking about background here so meghalaya which mainly carved out of this assam as an autonomous state in 1972 in 1972 meghalaya which mainly carved out of this assam and the creation of the new state which is mainly based on assam reorganization meghalaya act of 1969 and at that time meghalaya government which mainly refused to accept the areas of the present day east jaintia hills and as well as riboy west kasi hills districts of meghalaya they will be transferred to this Karbi analog, Kamrup metro and as well as Kamrup district of Assam. So we are talking about some important details regarding this agreement. So Assam chief minister and Meghalaya's chief minister, they mainly signed one historic agreement. So this historic agreement which mainly talks about closure in six disputed sectors that were taken up for the resolution in the first phase. Okay, they are mainly focusing on closure of these disputed sectors between this assam and meghalaya so there are six areas where there is some dispute so this pact which mainly incurred in the presence of our union home minister 
and those six disputed areas include Tara Bari, Zigang, Hameen, Bolpara, Kanpara, Pilangta, and Ratakchera under under this Kamrap Kamrap Metro and Sachar districts of Assam. And also there is some issues regarding this West Kasi Hills Deboy and East Jaintia Hills of Meghalaya. So out of this disputed land, Assam will be getting 18.51 square kilometers of disputed area and Meghalaya will be getting remaining 18.28 square kilometers of area and about 70 percentage of interstate boundary has now become the dispute free okay because of the signing of this agreement. So this is about this topic and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding this fake news. So fake news which is mainly spreading in this uh, social media platforms. So because of this now let us try to understand what are the steps that is going to be taken by this Facebook mainly to arrest this fake news. So this article which is important regarding GS paper 2. So now let us try to see context. So what happened in on March 27th Facebook parent company that is Meta. Meta stated that it can anticipate threats and it can help to prevent interference in elections better than before. So because of this uh, circulation of this fake information or fake news which is mainly circulating in the social media that will be having some negative impact on the elections as well. So because of this now this parent company of uh, Facebook which mainly said that they are going to come up with uh, some steps that can anticipate and that will be helpful to prevent the interference in the elections that is happening okay well, how there is mainly prevented this interference of elections before so by using some technology now they are going to arrest this in a better manner so here this meta said that it mainly going to use or strengthen this artificial intelligence and as well as machine learning systems and other systems or other tools that will be more effectively working and that will be helpful finding and even removing the abuse and as well as fake accounts. So this will be helpful for ensuring of a level playing field and Meta extended the use of all advertising tools and that will be previously available only to the large entities and to entities of all sizes. Okay. So what happened now it is going to strengthen this artificial intelligence machine learning and even some other tools such that that will be helpful for mainly coming up with a level playing field and this meta which may extended the use of all advertising tools okay such that it will be helpful for helpful for all entities mainly to curb this spreading of fake news so if we're talking about some more details it mainly says that the various changes meta has introduced like it mainly included mandating political ads on facebook instagram to be authorized and for the removal of this political advertisement it mainly violate of their policies and as well standards so they need to go for authentication process for sure okay and they need to confirm their primary location and they need to confirm the uploaded and as well as government photo id okay so in this way what happened is mainly going to curb this uh, spreading of this fake news in this uh, fake news in this facebook so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding bemstick so actually yesterday this bemstick summit which mainly concluded so this article which mainly talking about some highlights of that bemstick summit so now let us try to see that topic so this will be important from your international relations and this topic is also important from your mains and from prelims you can get a, uh, get some basic facts regarding this bemstick already we discussed that topic number of times from last three days so you have to revise those basic facts which are the members of this bemstick like that so if you're talking about context it mainly says that our prime minister he mainly called for strengthening of this bemstick so this bemstick mainly stands for b of bengal initiative for multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation okay bemstick mainly stands for b of bengal okay initiative for multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation so it is one of the welcome step right and there also came with the charter of the organization so this charter which mainly connects the littoral countries of this Bay of Bengal as well. So if you see some details of this summit. So here our Prime Minister said that we adopted this charter of this BEMSTEC. So it is one of the important critical step towards institutional architecture of this BEMSTEC. And this charter it is a new orientation and it mainly provides some concrete goals for this members of this BEMSTEC. So under these charters now these members of this BEMSTEC they were expected to meet at least once in every two years 
and our prime minister also called for free trade agreement among these member countries as well and they mainly focused on coastal shipping ecosystem and they mainly focused on electricity grid interconnectivity okay so these are the important components of this bimstick here so india which will be the security pillar of this bimstick so this is the thing which mainly said by our external affairs minister and this summit also came with a declaration so this is declaration regarding the master plan for transport connectivity as well so in this way it, it is mainly going to provide some framework for regional and national domestic connectivity so this is just of this topic and here your homework it is to revise some facts regarding this bimstick and next topic it is regarding is to to step up tracking of space debris so here this space debris it is one of the important challenge that we are facing in this space because whenever if you are carrying any satellite if that satellite which is mainly failed means that will be the space debris and it will be revolving around the earth so whenever it is revolving around the earth sometimes because of some solar flares that what happen that will be also leads to the further further dismantling of the satellites and there is also some cause of concern like they may come and they may fall on the earth as well okay and even that will be also leads to some damage to the new and as well as existing satellites which are present in the space so here we need to focus on the space debris and we need to bring that space debris down so this is the one important challenge that we are facing so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so here we need to know about this netra project so this will be important from your science and technology which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 so if we are talking about context it mainly says that with the space junk which mainly posing increasing threat to indian assets in space is so indian space research organization is building up its orbital debris tracking capability by deploying new radars and optical telescopes under the network of a space objects tracking analysis report so we are talking about context it mainly says that so what are the space junk or space debris that is present so that is mainly posing some important threat to indian assets in the space indian assets means nothing but indian related satellites so because of this isro which is mainly building optical debris tracking capability so this will be helpful especially to have a track on this space debris so here we need to know about this netra project so netra which mainly stands for network for space object tracking and analysis network for space object tracking and analysis so under this project isro which mainly plans to put up many observational facilities for example connected radars telescopes data processing units and as well as control center so these will be some important facilities that mainly present in this netra and they can among others uh, the important specialty of this netra here is they can spot they can track and they can have the catalog objects and they will be as small as 10 cm and up to as large as 3400 km so they can be tracked so if we talking about significance of this netra project the first one here is it will give india its own capability in space situation awareness so it is mainly going to give the give india capability of space situation awareness and like other space powered they can be also used to predict the threats from debris to indian satellites they can also predict the threats from the debris to indian satellites and this will be helpful especially to capture this geo earth uh, uh, geo station satellite and as well as geo and next one here is so it will be also helpful for the international efforts towards tracking warning about and even mitigating space debris so this will be the significance of this netra project and now let us try to see the studies questions the first one it is regarding maths the following so chittagong armor raid by kalpana dat yes mahila rashtriya sangha it is not by sarojini naidu and this one is quit india movement that is aruna ashif asif ali yes these two are correct so correct option is 3 1 and 3 only and next question is regarding mesolithic stage so they use microlith that is small stone tools yes and the shift in the pattern of hunting from a big game to a small game hunting yes and this one is origin of agriculture and beginning of domestication of animals that me that is one of the important future of this neolithic stage not microlithic mesolithic stage so here these two are the correct options the correct answer is one and two only and next today's questions are based on ivc the first one here is based on ivc so you need to identify which are the current statements regarding this ivc 
and second question is regarding this black and red wear culture it is regarding pottery so these two are very very important questions and ivc is one of the favorite area of upsc so please be prepared with this ivc from your ancient history and as well as from art and culture point of view so before seeing today's pdf i want to make you a small announcement so we are coming up with mains answer writing practice course and it is of one year so this new batch which is going to be started from april 4th so if you join if you want to join this course so please contact us on this number 8074765513 why i am saying to contact us on this number because actually the otp which is not coming in our website athos is academy for registration so to join this course actually we are mainly trying to resolve that issue so it will be taking like one or two days so in the meanwhile if you join if you want to join this course please contact us on this number and if you give our email id then we will be generating a link okay such that you can go for payment of this course and this course it is very very useful because we are giving you weekly targets and based on that weekly targets one daily question will be given on sunday there will be essay or case study practice and there will be evaluation one to one mentorship so everything will be there under this course So apart from that, we are also planning to launch the spend time courses for entire foundational course of 2023, and this course it is absolutely beneficial. Okay, and this will be very very useful. So if you want to take this course, so please contact us on the given number, and if you have any queries, we will be resolving your queries as well. So if you want to watch the demo videos, you can watch the demo videos in our Rathor's Eyes Academy website. So you can watch three demo videos in each and every module without paying a single penny. okay and if you want to get the pdf of this today's lecture please join the telegram channel link is given in description box so now let us try to see this today's hindu newspaper pdf yes this is our today's hindu date here is 31st march and this is delhi edition so imran loses majority after key partner sides with opposition so here you need to know about no confidence motion so in this no confidence motion here imran Imran who is the prime minister of Pakistan he lost his majority so what happened now here opposition party which is going to form the government in Pakistan okay so here you need to know about no confidence motion and this year you can get a question regarding this no confidence motion in your prelims for sure and i discussed about this bemstick article so leave this city page there is nothing much important in this city page so here you can see one article here is social media platforms must be held accountable center says uh, center to high court so center mainly told this delhi high court that social media platforms they must be accountable for subjugating and as well as up planting this fundamental rights like right to freedom of speech and expression okay so here you can uh, read this article and here you can connect this article with the spreading of fake news in this social media platforms and if you move further here in the states page i discussed about this space debris article and if you move further you will be getting this editorial page i discussed about this vasudevakam kutumbakam article and as well as this prisoners identification bill and there is one article that is important regarding this jc poa you can read this article already in yesterday's or day before yesterday's lecture i discussed this article regarding this iran's nuclear program and i also discussed about this sri lanka's economic crisis what are the issues and what is the india stand everything i discussed in our earlier lectures so here there is one article regarding this zik workers especially in this food delivery sectors for example you can talk about zomato okay like that so in that uh, platforms there will be the food delivery boys they will be working but they will be focusing on just uh, qua, just service they are like whether there is a quick delivery or not but there is nothing like focusing on the safety of those persons okay so this is the one cause of concern which is mainly expressed by this authors and if you move further in text and context i discussed about this assam meghalaya issue i discussed about this facebook issue and if you move further india and germany discusses this ukraine uh, ukraine situation so here germany has one cause of concern regarding this ukraine russia issue because germany used to get this gas and as well as crude oil from this russia and now there is decreasing of this imp import of this uh, gas and oil from this russia by this germany so because of this it is mainly affecting this energy security and here we can talk about india germany relations as well so this will be important from your international nations and if you see the next article here is no law which mainly mandates social media over verifications 
so what happened here there is no uh, there is no law which is mainly mandating regarding the social media user verification okay so here the government which is mainly saying that there are some issues whenever we are using the social media like privacy safety issue so actually there is no mandatory verification process that is mainly seen so this is one cause of concern so most of the articles in today's newspaper regarding the social media itself and next one is covax you have to know about what is this covax and which is mainly producing this covax and next one here is pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana it is seen in news so you have to know some basic facts and next one is purchase of 15 indigenous lch okay light combat aircrafts okay light combat helicopters it is in news and you have to know about some facts regarding that so if you move further who says that covid 19 deaths up by 40 percentage so the number of people who mainly killed by this covid 19 virus which mainly surged more than 40 percentage that is seen in the last week because of some changes in how this covid 19 deaths were reported across america and this is the thing which mainly said by this who so here we need to connect this topic with the new mutations okay new mutations in this corona virus and if you see this business news you can see india cuts coal supply as stock slump so these are some important articles that appeared in this today's hindu newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathors is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and if you have any doubts please contact us on this number 8074765513